On a national scale, Victoria and the South East in particular has been a very important keystone in water bird populations for centuries going back. It contains a mosaic of different types of habitats uh, from floodplains to coastal lagoons and birds have relied on these places as drought refugia um, and stable habitats. Professor Kingsford from the University of New South Wales um, has been studying these water bird populations for 33 years. And unfortunately, uh, on the larger scale of things, there is an overall decline. Looking around us here at Banyal Wetlands uh, in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne, you'd be forgiven for thinking that wetlands in Victoria are in a reasonably good condition. However, in the northwest, in the Mallee, Wimmera, and in the central region, uh, they are actually experiencing severe droughts. Drought conditions within Victoria preclude the life cycles of not only the birds themselves, but the prey and the vegetation that they rely on. And it reduces the ability for birds to find nesting materials, hide from predators uh, and feed. Considering the additive effects of increased water regulation and climate change, uh, a lot of these swamps, wetlands and waterways are really struggling throughout not only Victoria, but the Greater Murray-Darling Basin. A lot of even common species like straw-necked ibis, uh, glossy ibis, these water bird populations are going to be in huge trouble. Other species which are travelling from as far away as Siberia, species like marsh sandpiper, curlew sandpiper, listed as critically endangered nationally, uh, rely heavily on inland freshwater wetlands. Our office is aware that water bird populations have been declining right across southeast Australia. So a key objective of our environmental watering is bird populations, and that's not just because birds are important for their own sake, though they are, it's also because they're a great indicator of broader river health. Environmental watering really came about as a public policy response. So over the past hundred years, there's been massive dams built across the state and they've provided secure water supplies for towns, industry, agriculture. So really important for communities, really important for the economy, but they've also had an impact on the health of our rivers and wetlands. So environmental watering tries to replace some of those flows that would have happened naturally. Our office takes information from programs like the Victorian Climate Change Initiative. And we work with uh, 10 catchment management authorities across Victoria and Melbourne Water, and they use best available science and community knowledge to prioritise the most important sites in their region. We then prioritise across the catchment management authority boundaries to make sure we're looking after the most important statewide priorities so that we're getting our best environmental bang for buck. Over the past five years, since 2011, we've delivered to 188 river reaches and wetlands across Victoria. And in 2015-16, we were able to deliver to 146 of those. Across the Golden Broken Wetlands in 2015-16, we saw increased numbers of a range of bird species at a number of important wetland sites. At Black Swamp, for example, the once plentiful magpie geese have been recorded for only the first time, and at Canard's wetland for only the second time. Another really exciting observation this year has been finding the endangered Australasian bittern at Moody's Swamp. And at this site, we've deliberately timed environmental watering to provide shallow water and protect the vegetation uh, that this species needs to forage for food and for habitat. Brolga are another vulnerable species in Victoria and it was really exciting to see them successfully breeding at Johnson's Swamp this year in response to environmental watering. Environmental watering also provides great places for people to come and do bird watching, go kayaking, just nice places, nice green, watery places for people to come and sit and relax. Also provides community benefits in terms of uh, regional tourism as well, so great for the local economies too. Australia's water bird populations work on a very large scale and whatever we can do to support that population on the Victorian side of things uh, is significant and will help stem the tide of decline throughout these some 50 species of water birds. These sites are providing a diverse range of habitats for a number of significant plant and animal species including endangered species and so by providing these refuges particularly during droughts across Victoria we're able to make sure these species can continue to survive and thrive. <laughs>